Hello everyone, my name is Fox. This is going to be a tutorial on how to install the composite heatsink mod, the one that is going to be coming to everyone now. If you just got the heatsink itself and not the nylon case, um, it'll be relatively straightforward as you'll be using your original case, something like this. And I have right now the copper heatsink in here, which is the six month old version. So this is the old aluminum one. And as you can see, you can see the composite one right here. They look a bit different because this bottom base is copper and then it goes to aluminum. Uh, and that's how it works and it works really well. There is a, a technique that you need to do that you need to kind of follow. On the older versions, you didn't have to do it because they were solid. So there will be a process of putting thermal paste uh, in between the layers as well as on the heatsink to the CPU die. So we're going to go through the process of that and I'll kind of explain everything. I'm going to use all the tools that come inside of the box. I'll kind of put these on the side real quick. And this is the box that you should be receiving and it is pretty fancy. Uh, so this has gone through a lot of iterations and it's pretty interesting to see how professional uh, this is now. So this is how it should appear and it comes in this nice carry case so everything kind of comes together. If we take this out, you can see underneath everything is nicely protected and you have all the pieces that you need. Now this particular uh, mod will also include the SSD cooler. So we're gonna go through the whole part of installing that. Here is the piece that will help us kind of pry it up and we'll show all the pieces. I'm gonna be using all of the tools that come with this and nothing external. This is an emery board that we can use to, um, right here we can polish this part if we want to and I'll just briefly go over that. You can see that the SSD cooling kit is already connected to this heatsink. So we're gonna go ahead and Look at that, but first things first, we're gonna go ahead and open up my old one. And it's kind of interesting to see the differences between, this is the SSD cooling mod, and you can see the fan grills here versus this nylon case, which doesn't have it. There is no SSD cooling on this nylon case. And this, this nylon case is pretty new, it's pretty recent. And here is the very first one that's from six months ago, and this is super old at this point. And on the original one, you can also see that it doesn't have the SSD grounding part right here. And on this part, you do see it present. So this is the latest one that is for the SSD cooling. You're only gonna have these grills if you have the case with SSD cooling, otherwise you won't have that. So let's go ahead and begin. And we're gonna start by removing all seven screws around here. So we're gonna use this Phillips that comes in here. Now, I do wanna say that this Phillips will probably get worn down over some use, and it's probably gonna be good for one or two applications, especially when you start putting in the heatsink itself, it's gonna get a bit hard. So we're gonna go ahead and put this SSD, leave the screw intact when you're moving it. You don't have to remove the screw on that. This will just come right out. Now you just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those, give me a second. All right, so I have loosened up all the screws around here. And when you try to get them out, not, not all the times they'll kind of stay in there, they might. Not all the times will all of them come out. If they don't, just go ahead and take this little plastic spudger tool, little uh, uh, pick, and you're gonna go and find a nice crease that you can enter into, like say right there. And what you wanna do is you're gonna wanna go around the, the wind two. You can do this with a fingernail as well, but I mean, since you have this tool, you might as well use it. And it's better to go around the front first before you go to the back. You might have a screw that is still a little too tight right here. So let me go ahead and just make sure that this is coming out. Yeah, so this screw was in a little bit more, so then I've gone ahead. Now what you wanna do is you're gonna wanna pull back like this, and it comes off nice and easy. These parts are where we're gonna have to replace, sorry, this these buttons we're gonna have to remove and put it onto the other, the new case that we have. These are the only parts that are gonna have to come out. Uh, these buttons actually should be present in there, and they are. Uh, so you can see that the buttons are already there. So the only thing that we have to remove are these parts with the pogo pins and the switch. So this PC boot will come out and I'll show you how that works in a moment. Initially, this is the this is the case that you can see and you can see that I clipped off all the inside. This is what you'd have to do if you didn't buy uh, a nylon shell so that you can make room for the expanded heatsink. 
And this is pretty easy. You can just use clippers to take that out. Uh, and this is the official case. So we'll go ahead and take these out in a moment. But for right now, I'm going to remove this heatsink. And this is the old original one from a few months ago. So uh, this one doesn't apply to what you guys are doing, but let me just go ahead and remove this first and we'll go to the next steps. Alrighty, so that heatsink was removed and for everyone at home, pretty much you're gonna have the stock heatsink, which will look like this. The only part that you're gonna have to keep off is this screw right here, which looks similar to this screw right here. This screw will always remain off because the third party cooling heatsink, the one made from Indiegogo, the one that you're gonna get, is going to cover that section and it's actually going to be placing a lot of the pressure on there. So you're no longer gonna need that screw and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you can keep it someplace safe, but this this particular screw will always remain off when the bigger heatsink goes on. You can see this uh, enormous amount of thermal paste that I had used before and was quite necessary to get good temps. The only place that I would recommend when we actually start doing things is uh, to also put uh, paste on this area as well, just so we can cool off some of these part of the chipset as well over here um, and that's pretty much it the only other thing that you need to be mindful of is this screw that you take out which is for that post right there is the longer screw um, so there's going to be four screws that hold in the heat sinks right here three are the same size and this one is the longest one and that is for this post right here and it's technically one of the first one that i like to put in but not screwing all the way uh, so let me go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and clean this out and then we're going to start the process. Obviously your situation is going to be a little bit different than mine, but you are going to want to make sure that you clean this area relatively good and get whatever residue from the previous thermal paste that was on there applied off. Uh, one thing that I do like to do is use isopropyl alcohol and you can use a Q-tip to clean up around the area. This way we're making sure that any fresh application is going to go on there really good. Uh, so that's always a positive thing. So right now we can actually start beginning the process of remounting this on here and we'll do that process right now. All right, so now begins the process of removing a bajillion screws. For people that have the SSD cooling kit, uh, this is going to be my first time installing it, so it'll be kind of an adventure to go through it. For this particular part right here, it's pretty straightforward. This part is already connected right here, this power for the uh, SSD cooler with the fan and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this top shield, and then there's going to be another part for this composite part, and we'll go through that, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and removed this part right here, and all, look, thankfully all of these screws that come out here are all the same size, so just kind of keep them together in, in a certain area. We're now going to have to remove all of these screws to get to the composite layer because we will need to put thermal material, thermal interface material between these, your thermal paste, so you will have to use this in between the heatsink itself, and that part does get a little bit messy. Uh, and then this is the part itself. You can see one, two, three, four. These are the four screws that you use for the heat sink that you removed before. That is what you will use to mate down. And then we will once again, put these screws back on. It is a tremendous amount of screws and this part does take a little bit of time and it can get messy. Also be careful of looking at where these, these particular wires are because you don't want them to go back where they want to go. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed all these screws and they look like this. They are black screws that are pretty long, pretty similar to the uh, the heatsink screw, but not the same. So please don't lose this one. This one is very important. That is a critical screw that we want to get in. There are nine of these screws. Let's see if I can get them in the video. You see them right there. That's for this. Now this part is critical that I said before is because it's kind of on the inside of it. So when you take it out, you're going to want to Kind of put it back together or just kind of keep it as is and then we're gonna do our thermal interface sandwich stuff right now and that's all gonna go on along here and then we're gonna squish it down but i want to try to clean this area first and clean this so that there's no dust or anything and then we'll put some thermal interface material and then we'll mate it back together and then have to do a lot of cleanup all right and here is the point that no matter how you do it it's going to get messy so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to apply enough thermal interface material that it spreads out evenly and that when you sandwich this together and you screw it all together that it makes a f nice bond and it, there will be some seepage and there will be some cleanup. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and also clean it up.
Now that the first part of the mess is done and it's completed, we have this Tim sandwich going on. At this point, it's a good idea to go ahead and start removing these pieces, the shoulder button pieces from your old case to apply to the new case. This obviously only applies if you have the new nylon case. Additionally, look for these little plastic pieces uh, if they fall out and they're in the bag. So I'll go ahead and swap these out right now. Alrighty, and just like that, it comes out. What I like to do on the other side is use the flathead screwdriver to pull it out. This is PCB, so don't worry about it You know, being a little bit stiff. Just go ahead and pull it out and then put them back in. Make sure you put that little plastic piece over the little lip and you're fine. It's really, really straightforward and easy. Now begins the process of putting this all back together. At this point in time, if you wanted to use the emery board to kind of just uh, do circular motions to kind of just polish it up a little, you're more than welcome to do that. It's up to you. We're going to do the abrasive side first, then we're going to polish it, and then we're going to clean it. All right, that's what mine looks like polished. Let's get some thermal paste on the chip. All right, this is what mine looks like. And again, you will have to use a lot because there is a considerable amount of distance between the heat sink and the chip itself. That is to protect the chip from you over tightening and breaking it. So you will have to coat it with a bunch of stuff. Otherwise, you could use a shim. And then I also have it on these this block of circuits over here as well. Forgot to point out real quick, we will have to remove these three screws to put on the SSD cooler. This one will come out and these two will be used to mount the SSD cooler. Alrighty, and now everything's installed. Again, this screw right here is pretty crucial and you want to be careful when screwing these in because you can over tighten them and break the mounting point. So be careful and do it in a crisscross fashion when you're installing these. These two screws are a bit of a pain to get in, but once you go in, they're, they're fine. Uh, and that's that. After that's done, you're going to put back on this shielding and then cover it up and then you're done. When putting it back together, remember to go in from this side first and then snap down. And that's it for the tutorial. When you're done, you'll be able to flip the SSD cooling mod on and off from here. 